Hey Geeks and Gamers, welcome to the end of Atari Week. Atari Week. Um, I'm doing a brand new Turbo Vlog. I don't think I've done one of these since like 2021 uh, when Spencer and I ate weird jerky. <laughs> uh, so it's been a minute since I've done a Turbo Vlog. I thought, what a fitting way to end uh, Atari Week, a week that has seen many different reviews and uh, different styles of videos from my channel, like the table of ranking and the games that shaped me. I thought I should bring back one more series I haven't done in a while with this one. Welcome back to the Turbo Vlog. Don't know how often I'll do, do Turbo Vlogs. I used to like doing these a lot, so who knows. Um, this, this, uh, this one is special. It's for Atari Week because I'm talking about a special um, console, a special thing, which I actually have plugged up behind me so I could have it for reference uh, on my screen and talk about some of the games I've played on it. Um, that is the Atari VCS. Uh, I've had the Atari VCS for about a year now. Uh, I'm going to say a year in the title. Honestly, it's been, it's been um, 11 months because I got this in December of last year because it was my Christmas present. Um, the Atari VCS was something that I was interested in from day one. I think it was 2017. I remember them uh, putting out the, um, the Kickstarter for it. It was called the Atari Box at the time. And uh, I was in, I, that was around the same time that I really got into collecting Atari. Uh, so that was around the time that I really was like interested in the brand and the idea of a brand new uh, Atari console as it was being um, kind of shown at the time was was tantalizing. I was like, yeah, that sounds cool. Um, I got really into Atari collecting. In fact, um, you can't see it, but the, this plastic shelf down here, I have three plastic shelves below the CD rack. They're just full of 2600 and 7800 games. Uh, I really love collecting Atari stuff. So, um, yeah, a new Atari product I'm definitely interested in. Uh, it came out in, I believe, 2021 is when it, it, is when it officially came out um, to the market, or to backers, maybe. It's, I'm unclear about the release schedule. Um, all I know is that I started hearing about it actually being out in 2021, and I got one last year. Um, so I'm here to talk about my year with the Atari VCS, what it is. You probably want to know what the hell this thing even is. And I would show you the console, but once again, it, it's, I keep it plugged up here in my office. I don't want to unplug it. Um, I do have the controllers, um, here to, sh to talk about and show you. Um, in fact, but you, you can see my, my VCS is, uh, it's, it's currently turned on, um, to the TV behind the camera here. So I can have it as reference. The Atari VCS is a console PC mini hybrid thing. Um, it's, it's a it's a weird device that they decided to market as a console, and it's kind of not. Um, if you're comparing this to like a PS5, PS4, Xbox Series, Xbox One, you know, Switch, uh, this is those consoles are definitely way better than this thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, simply because they are meant to be consoles and they have a bigger, bigger uh, list of games, and they ha they they are consoles. This isn't really a console. Uh, this is a mini PC with a console OS baked in. Um, now, saying that, when I first got this, I I was interested in the mini PC side of things. Um, you can actually like load up a uh, flash drive or a so some sort of external hard drive with uh, a bootable version of Windows or Linux, whatever you, whatever operating system you want to use, and use this as a full functional mini PC. Uh, that was something I was initially interested in. Simply, man, I'm tired. Sorry, it's early. I got like something in this eye. I was I was initially interested in that because of the prospect of emulation using this thing to play emulation. I've seen people online have gotten. GameCube, uh, Xbox 360 working well on this thing. Uh, I believe when they even like were showing off the mini PC side of things, they showed like Borderlands being played. That's pretty cool for a, a, a device that is pretty small. This is a really small device, honestly. Um, if it fits nicely into my office area, that's why I like keeping it in here. 
Um, so, yeah, I was interested in that. But then a couple months after I got this, um, I still hadn't set up the mini PC side of things. And I bought a gaming laptop that is way more powerful than this thing could ever be. Unless I, like, really took it apart and upgraded it. Because you can do that if you want to. Um, so, I have a better gaming laptop. So I didn't fuck with the PC side of this thing. <laughs> and if you're here to learn about the PC side of the VCS, I'm sorry, but I didn't do that. I kept it as the console, within the console OS. So when you first boot up the VCS, for one, that was a process in itself. Um, for some reason, whenever you start up the VCS for the first time, it has to do updates. Of course, all things have to do updates. Um, but mine got stuck and I was scared. Like this was Christmas day. I just gotten this thing. I was out at my parents house. They had bought it for me for Christmas. And uh, we were like scared because I couldn't get, it was, it was almost like a boot loop uh, situation where I've heard, I, I, I looked it up and it's a common occurrence with, with, with setting up this thing. But I was, I was worried that they had wasted their money on a device that wasn't going to function correctly. Um, luckily it did finally get through the process, but you know, that's not something I've ever had to deal with, with like an official game console, like a switch or a Xbox or something. Um, so that was weird, but got beyond that, set up the console into the console OS. And that's how I mainly used it is as a console. So again, the mini PC side, you, you can hook up, you know, hook up a mouse and keyboard, use it as a mini PC. I didn't do that, but you can, and it works for emulation. You can play Steam games to a certain point. You know, it's it's probably nice for that stuff, but I don't need it for that. So I kept it within the Atari OS, uh, the operating system, of course, and um, used it as a console within the Atari OS. And Atari does offer quite a bit within that Atari OS. Um, for one. There are games. When you first get the VCS, it comes with the Atari Vault, which um, is a collection of Atari arcade games and 2600 games. And you can play it with the modern controller, which you get. This is the modern controller. It looks like an Xbox controller almost, but it has a few weird things like this disc instead of a D-pad. Um, I like the, the red, kind of, you know, reminds you of the old school controller. Um, or you can play it with... The, what's, I think is more attractive for this thing is the classic joystick controller, uh, which is actually pretty cool. Again, it looks like the old school joystick, but what's interesting to me is that, for one, uh, let me see if I can turn it on here. I have my VCS on, so it should connect. If it's charged, yeah, yeah. Hold on. It's, it's connecting. The Bluetooth takes a second for these controllers for some reason to, to connect to the VCS itself, so... That's interesting. You can see it in real time right now. It's probably gonna take a second to actually, if it'll do it. <laughs> Give it a second. <laughs> it's thinking. <laughs> yeah. And maybe not where I'm on a, a, a different screen or something. Maybe I have to go to like a connection screen. Um, interesting, very interesting. It's still not connected to my VCS. Wow. <laughs> I'm not here to give this thing a glowing review. I'm just here to talk about my experience and why I think it's an interesting device. Um, Jesus. Okay, while that's doing this, um, while it's not connecting... Holy shit, why is it not... Hold on, let me, uh, let me see if I can, like, hardwire it in. I have a, uh, I have a long-ass cord here that I have hooked into my DCS. Okay, it's connected through that. I just wanted to show you, for one, I like the fact that when you do this, it has lights around the side, which is a neat, you know, because the original controller had, like, the pattern, which I, I'm i sure I have a joystick around here somewhere, but I don't want to find it. And then also, you can turn the stick and it's a paddle. So it, it, it also works for paddle games. That's interesting. Um, I, that's all I wanted to turn on to show you, was uh, this, this was, like, the cool new thing with the VCS was like an updated joystick and it works um and playing it with the Atari Vault was cool first day I got it and um I like the um joystick controller and I do use it I have two of them actually hold on 
Um, I did get an extra one. I didn't get an extra modern controller. I'll explain that in a second, but I did get an extra joystick because, like, you want two joysticks to play multiplayer games. They have these grips on the bottom for holding them. It's pretty cool. Um, so these are fun. These are a lot of fun if you're playing old school games on this thing and want classic Atari style joysticks. Uh, I didn't get two of the modern controllers. I've thought about it before, uh, but you actually don't even need uh, the modern controller. You can actually use, and I have one sitting over here just for this purpose, an Xbox controller. So really, I have I have like 15 fucking Xbox controllers laying around. I don't know. They keep spawning. I swear to God, they just show up. Um, so I use this on my VCS a lot. Um, so when I play multiplayer and I need modern controllers, this is my second controller. It works just fine. It's the same layout. It's fine. It's fine. I don't need to pay 60 bucks for another one of these. I do like the, the design, but I don't need another one. I could use an Xbox controller. Oddly enough, I can't use a series controller. Like the, the series controller, the way you can tell is that they have um, the share button right here. Um, this is an Xbox One controller that I got with the Xbox One S. And uh, this is the one that I have to use because all my other controllers, I believe, are series controllers or they don't have Bluetooth. Like, I have some early Xbox One controllers that don't have Bluetooth. So this is the one that I keep for my VCS. Um, very strange that that's the way that is. Uh, but let's talk about what I've played on the thing. So you get the Atari Vault, obviously. Uh, has a bunch of games. Uh, you, you can also, for like $5, get the, the Atari Vault 2, which has some more oddities, like unreleased games and... 5200 games and some more arcade games. Um, and then what did I get day one? I got Atari 50 because that had just come out and I did a review on that if, if you want to know my feelings about Atari 50. Uh, I fucking loved it. Um, I got Atari Mania which was like a WarioWare Atari game where they took like you play as like a the curator of an Atari museum and um you are trying to figure out what's what's happening in this museum. There's a, there's a storyline. And you play these micro games, kind of like WarioWare, but they mash up to a existing Atari games. So they may mash up Haunted House and Centipede. Or, you know, uh, Dark Chambers and uh, Pong. Who knows? You know, they, they can mix up any combination of games and you kind of have to, you know, figure them out in, like, rapid fire. It's pretty cool. Um... I'm trying to think of what else I got day one. Oh, Donut Dodo is one that I got day one. I reviewed that on this channel. Um, I believe that's still like my thing on my page. When you first go to my channel page, I think I still have Donut, Donut Dodo up. I love that game. It's a great 80s inspired like Donkey Kong game. Uh, fantastic. Um, I got some, oh, I got Gun Tech 2. Gun Tech 2 what is like a um, indie style twin stick space shooter game with like gravity physics it's pretty cool um and, and it was one that i had heard of prior so i really wanted to dive in now the vcs library is interesting uh because there's really only two types of games you're going to get on the storefront uh, or really only three types of games i should say that uh, the, that you're going to get on the storefront you're not going to get any big like releases from um companies like, like Sega, Capcom, Square Enix, those aren't here. You're not going to get those. Um, you're you're going to get, obviously, Atari games, which they do a pretty good job of supporting it. Uh, actually, this morning, at the time of recording this, I just downloaded uh, Berserk Recharge that just came out from Atari, and I'm going to play that after I get done recording this. But uh, Atari's done a pretty good job. Let me look through my list here and see what I've got from Atari itself. I got Aka R, which I reviewed this year. Atari 50, which I reviewed this year, Atari Mania, both the Atari Vaults, um, and this isn't counting, like, some of the, I have, like, some of the random ones, like, I have Berserk 2600 and Aqua Adventure 2600, uh, Berserk Recharged, that's a big one, Black Widow Recharged, Breakout Recharged, uh, Caverns of Mars Recharged, Centipede Recharged, um, I don't know, I'm still looking through here, Haunted House came out last month, I bought that. And I haven't bought all the Atari games that have come out. I've skipped a few of them. Uh, Missile Command Recharge, Mr. Run and Jump was a cool new platformer game that they did. Quantum Recharge. I love the Recharge games, obviously. Um, and Yars Recharge. Those are like the official Atari, like the new Atari games that um, I have on the VCS. And I skipped a few. I didn't buy uh, Neo Sprint. I didn't buy Days of Doom. 
And a few of the Recharge games, I haven't double dipped yet because I have them on my Xbox as well. And I had that before the VCS. So um, some of those Recharge games I might get on the VCS later just because they're, they're fun to play with the, the joystick. Um, the, second, the second kind of game you're, you're going to get is indie games. And they can vary in quality and price. Um, sometimes you get a really cheap indie game for like $2 and it's a really simple like puzzle game. You know, like I have a game called A Path to the Princess where you play as a prince and you have to like, um, you're like on a bunch of stacked balls and you have to get these balls into certain slots to get to the princess, um, and we, you know, without running out of places to step. It's kind of cool. Um, uh, I hope I say this right. Apollo 2 is one that I got uh, really early and that's like a multiplayer space crafting survival game it's very strange it's kind of cool it's like very relaxed you're just chilling out you know in, in outer space mining um these like asteroids and stuff and and every once in a while like an alien will come by you have to kill it and then like you have to trade things in and manage your uh your like oxygen and food and stuff it's pretty neat um I'm looking through my list here. Uh, oh, BPM Boy. BPM Boy is a big one for me. Uh, that was one that I was excited to play when I got the VCS. It's like, how do I describe it? It's like Monkey Ball, uh, Marble Mania, Marble Madness, Marble Madness, Monkey Ball, Marble Madness, or something. It's like one of those games mixed with um, like a platformer. <laughs> uh, you play as a a ball kid named BPM Boy who has to maneuver through each level, get collectibles, and make it, you know, to the end within a time limit. It's very tough. Uh, the team that made it um, actually made the old um, Strike series, like de like uh, de uh, Desert Strike uh, Desert Strike, and uh, Jungle Strike. Can't talk this morning. And uh, they also made Buffy on the Xbox, which I talked about recently for some reason. That keeps coming up. Buffy on the Xbox. Um, so, yeah, I was really excited to play that one, and I really liked that game. Um... And I'm looking through here of games that I really liked. Uh, oh, yeah, and BPM Boy is one that you can't find on consoles right now. You can get it on Steam, I believe, but if you want it on, like, a console type thing, VCS is, you know, is where it's living right now. Uh, Danger Scavenger was a cool one that uh, I know was on other things, but that one is, like, a twin-stick shooter where you're going across rooftops and uh, destroying waves of enemies, and it's kind of roguelike. That one's a lot of fun. Uh, recently I got Dino Blaster, which was interesting. Uh, Dino Blaster was the name of Bomberman in Europe. And, um, I believe this Dino Blaster game was going to be a, um, uh, Intellivision Amico game. And then, you know, that died because it never existed. <laughs> sorry, Tommy Tallarico, I'm not sorry, you're an asshole. Um, scammed a lot of people. Anyway, so the Dino Blaster game... Is came out on other things, including the VCS, which I think is hilarious that the game that was meant a game that was meant for the Amico got released on the VCS before it ever came to anything in television related. Ends Reach is one that I got recently. Very cool, very indie. I think like one guy did this, but it kind of feels like a PS2 game, and it's kind of like Metroid Prime feeling with the 3D map and stuff. I really liked it. Um, and there's a there, there's more. I'm not going to go through all of every, every single one of my games, but there's a good selection of indie games on the storefront. The third type of game you're going to get is Homebrews. Uh, something interesting I, I love that they've been doing is, is releasing Atari Homebrew games. So I have games like Amoeba Jump 2600, which is a very fun, like, uh, dual jump style homebrew game. Um, some of the games by YouTuber, uh, John Hancock got released, like, uh, recently I bought Game Panic 3, and he has two other games that I have as well, uh, that were homebrew games released on Atari that got released on VCS. Um, some of the games by, by developer Muddy Vision, like Tire Tracks, um, were really fun homebrew games, um, and I have, like, Tower of Babel 2600. I love the fact that they're releasing homebrew games. That's great. Um, I love Atari 2600 and 1700 homebrew games. So putting them for like two, three dollars on the storefront for the VCS is fantastic. Um, also, there are streaming services. If you like uh, Xbox uh, Game Pass, you can stream that. Amazon Luna, you can stream that. Um, 
let's see, what is it, GeForce Now, you can stream that. Um, the console comes with, um, what's it called, um, Arcade, Ant Arcade, what's it called? Ant Stream. Uh, it comes with Ant Stream, and that's one that you can uh, play a bunch of classic games. Um, and that was on this before it was ever on consoles. And uh, that was cool. Um, so yeah, there's there's quite a bit to still play on on the on the device. Um, it's just you're not going to find the the big releases. Some issues I have with the device. For one, um, you would think this little Atari symbol on on the controllers would be a home button, but it isn't. Um, if a game doesn't have like a return to um, menu thing baked in, some games do. Some games don't. Uh, what you have to do is actually, which I can't show you because I'm using my phone to record this, you have to hook up um, your phone through an app to your VCS over Wi-Fi, and then you can use your VCS to navigate. Kind of cool because you, you can also use your, uh, sorry, use your phone to navigate. Kind of cool because you guys, you can also use your phone as like a mouse and keyboard. I do that sometimes with something like Amazon Luna, where I have to actually use a mouse and cursor. Um, also, uh, you, you, you can get apps for many different streaming devices, uh, uh, streaming services like Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, AMC Plus, you know, Disney Plus, whatever you want to watch. But you also have to navigate it with a mouse and keyboard because it goes into like an internet browser. Uh, cool that you can still do it, but uh, it's weird that I can't navigate it with the controller. It's a little little quirk of the console. Um, I'm trying to think of other things I haven't enjoyed about the VCS. Some of the stuff on the interface itself is weird, like trying to switch between this uh, this controller and this controller. Uh, sometimes it's just easier to restart the console because there's no easy way to really disconnect one without like forgetting it. Um, so that's bizarre. Maybe if you if you own a VCS, let me know an easier way to do that. I've only had it for a year, so I'm still learning some uh, ins and outs of the system. Um, yeah, I was worried at the beginning of this year because they dropped um, the manufacturer for this thing. So I thought they would be dropping uh, support shortly after. But this has actually been like one of the best years for the device. I'm glad I picked it up now uh, because this year they've had a lot of releases. And uh, it's been a ton of fun. Um, if I had to give the device like a like a rating, like a, like a letter rating, I would probably give it like a C or something. Maybe like a C+. Plus. Um, it's definitely an enthusiast's device. It's definitely an enthusiast console. Uh, it's, it's one that I have enjoyed playing. It hasn't replaced any of my other consoles, though. I still play my Xbox. I still play my Switch. I still play everything else. But... It's fun to turn this thing on and play some of the uh, indie games or the arcade style games or, you know, whatever Atari puts out. And, uh, you know, it's good for multiplayer. I love showing this thing off to friends because um, people, most people have not heard about this thing. They have no clue when I, you know, when I say Atari VCS, they're thinking some old console. They don't know that this is a new thing. Um, so I, I love bringing friends over and being like, here, hold this joystick and we'll play break out together, you know, and twist the, twist the joystick for a paddle. They're like, what is this? Um, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, again, I wouldn't buy this over a modern console. Definitely don't. But if you're interested and you like Atari style games and stuff, um, there is a good number of, I think there's like 131 games on the storefront right now. Streaming services and collections have more games, of course. And, and if you want to use the mini PC side of things, you can. And you can play Steam, you can play emulation, you can play whatever you want on that side of things. With you know, as as long as the device can run it, of course. Um, so yeah, thanks for um, tuning in to Atari Week. Uh, I have like a minute because my I, I see I have 25 minutes <laughs> total on my uh, camera time here, so I have to wrap things up. Uh, thanks for joining Atari Week. It's been a ton of fun doing the Atari Week content for you guys. Uh, I loved doing review months, so I wanted to do something similar. I still have enough time to do a full month again. But let me know what you thought of Atari Week. Thanks for, for watching this Turbo Vlog. Let me know if you want to see more vlogs. I would love to do this. Um, I have a new office set up, of course. I moved last year as well. Um, so I have a new place so I can even film these. So that's pretty cool. Um, thanks for watching, you guys, and, uh, yeah, have you, uh, 
Have you played Atari today? Thank you.